Hello everyone and welcome to the CAS Virtual Showcase 2021 and this keynote talk by Jennifer King on Microsoft's Explore the Digital Future program. My name is Suzanne Cray and I'm the CAS Outreach Manager for the Southwest and your host for this session. We're also joined by Tim Wilson who's the moderator and will be monitoring the question window. Shortly I'll introduce Jennifer and her guests but just before we start a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, during the session, please use the question window on the right hand side of your screen to ask questions. The top of the window has an orange rectangle which can be expanded or collapsed. Tim will be making a note of questions posed there and these will be answered if time allows at the end. Do keep an eye on the chat window too as well uh, pop a few things in there as we go. If time short, responses will be posted on the CAS forum and across CAS social media channels. The hashtag for this event is CASVirtual21 and as a reminder all attendees for this session are in listen only mode. So allow me to introduce Jennifer King. Jennifer is an award winning international thought leader in education with 20 years of experience in the education sector from classroom to corporations and works for Microsoft Education UK. She's passionate about the success of students and their teachers and how the power of technology can transform the way they work and learn. Jennifer has been the school's engagement lead for the UK since 2019 after returning from the Microsoft Corporation in Seattle, where she was the Director of Education in the 21st Century Job Skills and Employability team. Jennifer is joined by two guests today, Robert Bradley and Graham Feek, who will be sharing their experiences of the programme. I know she's really excited to be delivering this keynote to you today as part of the CAS Virtual Showcase, so I will hand straight over to you, Jennifer. Thanks, Susan. I am really happy to be here with you today and sharing with you our brand new program, Explore the Digital Future, which is set to prepare young people um, for the future. The thing about the future is, um, is that we always talk about it as this great unknown. And, um, and it can be quite scary for students particularly young people who are thinking about climate change, they're thinking about job insecurity, they've just been through a pandemic. The future is kind of scary. And so as the adults that are helping them come into their own adulthood in this world, we're here to shepherd them along. And in order to do that, Microsoft wants to help schools and, and young people all over the planet be empowered to succeed in tomorrow's job market, regardless of their background, regardless of where they come from, regardless of their neurodiversity. We want to make sure that everyone is successful. So let's look at what Microsoft visioned 10 years ago. Let's have a peek at in what was a visioning video from Microsoft of the possibilities in 2020. Now the audio on this video doesn't work, so I'll talk over it a little bit, but um, it's just extraordinary watching all of the things that have been visioned 10 years ago. Oh, it's at the end of it. <laughs> Let me take it back to the beginning. There, there we go.
So you can see so many of the things that have come to be, like translator, you have the hub, you have whiteboarding. It's just an amazing amount of technology that Microsoft has brought into the world in just 10 years. And we use this at home, and it might not look exactly like this, but screencasting things from your phone onto your TV, that happens. And we are doing this without even thinking about it anymore. It's just the normal way of doing things. So what, what is Microsoft's vision now? You know, what could possibly be happening? And um, if we look back as well to a study that was done in 2011, by the Institute for the Future, you can see that in 2011, what they envisioned work and the skills that you would need for work would be in 2020. They had an idea of a new media ecology, that new communication tools require a new media literacy. Well, that is absolutely true. And we have moved well beyond just a Facebook post from 10 years ago. We are now in an element of, of TikTok, of a new way of communicating, different forms of speech. It has impacted the way that we see the world through memes and GIFs. There's absolutely a new way of communicating. A, a computational world where you have a massive increase in sensors and processing power that connects everything. That's IoT, being able to take um, making devices smart devices, lights automatically turning on in your house um, based on when you get home, as an example. You would have the rise of smart machines and the automation of industries and a globally connected world. That global, globalization of the world, meaning that it doesn't matter if you're living in Delhi or if you're living in New York City or London, you can still have the same opportunity for the same job. Um, and so skills becomes even more important. And so when we think about this, that was 2011. Well, all of that has happened. All of this is, has come to be in 2015. They did a, um, an idea of how work will change over time. In 2015, they saw the state of work being full-time employment, and you would go to an office, you would maybe have a desktop computer at that office, but then they started thinking, well, in the future, we, are, we could work from anywhere, perhaps. Perhaps our technologies will be run on the cloud. Maybe we won't need to have servers. Maybe we'll have flexible working. Well, that probably sounds pretty familiar <laughs> of what has occurred. So this was a prediction of 2015 to 2020. So here we are, we're in the future. The future is not completely unknown. We can help our students feel more secure, but we have to take action to be ready. Just recently, this headline was in the, um, uh, in the, on the BBC about the UK heading towards a digital skills shortage disaster. It talked about young people having a drop by 40% since 2015 of taking IT subjects. 70% of young people expect employers to teach them, not their teachers. Fewer than half of British employers think that students are leaving the, their school ready to be employed. And 76% of firms think that a lack of digital skills is going to hit their profitability. And it's true, not having a skilled workforce hurts everybody. It hurts the people that are trying to be hired and to have sustainable employment, and it hurts our economy. So what are we going to do to manage this? And why is this happening? Surely over the last 10 years, we've all gained massive digital skills. So why do we still feel this way? Well, it turns out that there is a, lock, a lack of clearly defined job roles in certain fields, that people are just confused as to what jobs are out there, that there is a lack of understanding and guidance about potential career paths. The traditional career paths that we used to know of are 
they just don't apply anymore. And it means that we have to focus on skills as opposed to just thinking about a career path. What can you do with your skills instead of thinking, what job should I be when I grow up? And a lack of relatable role models. There is, you know, 50% of the world is female and 50% of the world doesn't feel like the IT industry is made for them. We have to change that. That is the same as for minorities and underrepresented populations, making sure that people feel like the tech industry is inclusive and a safe space because good technology is made by everybody. And there's a difficulty in making the technical professions appealing to young people uh, and especially to young women. There are stereotypes abound in the tech industry but it's really not like that. And we have to help that evolve in the minds of people and may challenge those assumptions. So what can we do about this? Okay, so a lack of clearly defined job roles in certain fields. This is one of the challenges. Well, we know that 85% of all jobs that will exist in 2030 haven't been invented yet. Yeah, clear, clear job roles aren't there because we don't really know what they are. But that doesn't mean that we should sit back and just wait. Instead, we have to make sure that we're looking at what are the skills that are growing. So if we look at the top 10 skills of 2025, this is only three years from now. This uh, report is from 2020. So we're working at a, an amazing um, rate of change. So in 2025, the types of skills that we're looking for are problem solving skills, analytical thinking, complex problem solving, having that creativity and analysis, self-management, being able to regulate your own self, having active learning, being able to have resilience and tolerance to stress. Working with people, having that emotional intelligence, leadership, and social influence. And then technology use and, deploy and development. Absolutely, you're going to need to know how to use tech, how to design tech, how to create with it, how to make with it, not just consume. And so we have jobs that are in decline. These are the jobs that we shouldn't be bringing in speakers to talk to our students about accounting. We shouldn't really be bringing them in to talk about operation managers or, or people who stock shelves because these jobs are on their way out. They will be automated. So instead, we need to find um, experiences and skills that help students think about data science, becoming a data scientist or, or working in machine learning or doing, um, uh, helping do digital transformation, which is what I do. <laughs> and so it's something that we want to have, um, we want to build this muscle in our students to have the skills they need for the future, not for today. So there's a lack of understanding of guidance about those skills, about those potential career paths that are listed as the ascending careers of the future. But Microsoft has created um, microsoft.com slash learn. And on here we have students um, as a role. And if you click on students, you will get a whole page, um, a whole library of activities that are just for students and educators. And in here, it has a list of all of the up and coming roles, then um, the certifications that you would need to get to be prepared for that role. So definitely go to microsoft.com slash learn to start getting your students on that pathway to a future job. And then there's the lack of relatable role models. I won't play this video for you because the sound isn't working, but the, the um, gist of the video is basically they asked a bunch of you know, young, young children in primary school, they asked them, do you, uh, do you know of any inventors? And they all said Albert Einstein or Alan Turing or you know, any other male inventor they could think of, and not one in, mentioned a female inventor. And then they pointed that then they asked them to think of one and they just couldn't. 
our curriculum and our syllabus and our texts are not bringing women and people of color to the forefront. They are not talking about the diversity that does exist in the tech industry. We need to make sure that the Katherine Johnsons are the ones that people think of. We have to make sure that Ada Lovelace is talked about. These are the, um, the female champions in technology. Because ultimately the tech industry just doesn't seem to be appealing to young people and especially young women. So what can we do about that? Well, all of these things Microsoft cares about, we care about ensuring that the tech industry is diverse and it's inclusive. We care about making sure that young people feel in control of their future. And we are really passionate about making sure that everyone is empowered to have employment success. So our Explore the Digital Future program is a, um, it basically embodies that mission because we want to ensure that the tech industry of tomorrow is inclusive and welcoming and built by the young people of today. It takes all of our best resources across Microsoft and puts them in one place. There, you don't, don't have to go to this website and this website and this website trying to create a lesson. We've done that all for you. We've taken our best stuff from our Microsoft Computer Science Curriculum Toolkit through a Magic Cup Junior, Make Code, and the favorite Minecraft. It's all in there. Our ambition is to reach 10,000 young people to participate in this program. We've only been launched two months and we've done it already. And so we're hoping next year to reach another 10,000 students. So we really hope that you'll download these lessons and share them to make sure that your students are future proofed. We want them to have the opportunity to have uh, build practical digital skills, not just listen about them, but to actually get hands on. We want them to understand the values of Microsoft, and we want them to be positive and feel inspired to work in the tech industry. So the program itself starts with discovering the industry, talking about the future, talking about today's tech, and talking about the importance of diversity, accessibility, and inclusivity. You then get to choose from four different tracks about coding, IoT, AI, and big data. Then once you have um, uh, had a hands-on experience, you can then go and apply that through our Imagine Cup Junior program. And you can take part in one of our experiences, whether it's a webinar or it's a work experience week or it's a Minecraft experience, you can come and have that directly with Microsoft. And then coming soon, we're hoping to add a technology and business track that's all about productivity. So you don't go and work in a tech um, company, but all com companies are going to be tech companies. So you have to have that baseline of um, uh, a certification around office tools. So we offer an educator guide that takes you through all of the lessons that you'll want to deliver. And then we also give you lesson slides that you can deliver um, direct to your students. And when they're done, they receive a certificate of completion for each one of those tracks. Then if you take it one step further, you can have your students participate in Imagine Cup Junior, go on to Microsoft Learn and work towards those certifications. And in fact, I have someone on the call with us right now, Robert Bradley, who is an absolute expert when it comes to Microsoft certifications. Um, he was, um, uh, he is one of the first teachers that was able to, uh, to try out this before we even launched it at, at his school, UTC Reading. And so with that, I would like to introduce Robert Bradley. Good afternoon all. <laughs> Uh, well, I usually, um, well, I got to know Robert actually on LinkedIn before I ever met him in person because he would always be posting about um, the certifications that his students were getting or his colleagues were getting. And I was just always so excited of how much skill building. So what inspired you to do that, Robert? Um, well, I'm, I'm very lucky. So I joined UTC Reading um, and they have always offered the Microsoft qualifications for free. So I've always had the opportunity to do them. So of course I came in and I filled my boots with them and suddenly they thought, hold on, here's someone who 
has taken these qualifications. Let's see if he can spread the joy, spread the love for them. And so I've started a three-year journey of getting our students to really engage with and take these qualifications. And now I think I talk about a culture here. We have a culture of studying for uh, these qualifications because, as you said before, it's all about skills. The future is all about skills. It's about getting into those habits of lifelong learning. And so I think it's great that our students love coming in and they love taking exams. I mean, <laughs> who'd have thought it? Well, it's neat when those exams come with credentials that employers are immediately say, I know that you can, you have this skill. And somehow it's just a little bit different than having that GCSE. It's, it's about having this really tangible skill that employers really need. And in fact, a lot of the people in their own workforce don't have that skill. So when a young person comes in with that certification, they almost come in at a higher level than some of the people that are already um, employed there. So, um, would you like to um, uh, share? Sorry, I'm going to move the slides before. Would you like to share a bit about how you um, uh, used Explore the Digital Future in your classroom? Absolutely, and I think I, I really want to pick up on one of the points you you made about the gender representation and and everything because the video that you would have shown had you had the opportunity. I showed to my class and the first comment was, but there are no no boys there. Um, and I said, okay, fair point. So how do you think girls have felt for the past 50 years and stuff? And it was a massive impact on our students because they just had never thought about representation in that way and the lack of female representation in the tech industry. Um, so it was immediately powerful. And I know it was powerful because I went back to my students uh, this afternoon um, and said, oh, by the way, I'm doing this talk with Jen from Microsoft. Do you remember that lesson? And that was one of the immediate things that came out from them. Oh yes, that was the one where we talked about gender representation. The other thing that immediately came out very shortly afterwards was inclusivity um, and, and disability, in particular the, the game controller that came out of Microsoft for them. And the best bit is because I'd gone off on a tangent about how uh, Microsoft is very good at letting their staff prototype and go off in that a different direction to maybe what their traditional role is in order to help improve and stuff and they all remembered that they all remembered that you know modern working isn't just about your job role it's about going out trying things and everything so yeah i mean the impact of the uh lessons are just amazing they can remember them weeks well nearly a couple of months ago now so so that was fabulous the other thing i have to say was how easy it was to use um i have to admit to being a typical teacher and realizing that i'd said i was going to do these lessons and that i was going to feedback on them and realizing the day before and having to do the lesson at very short notice, but the ability to be able to do those because of the teacher pack and the guidance that you have with it, it was just so easy to use. So yeah, I'm a big fan already. That is fantastic, really, really good. And you have such a technically able um, student body that um, uh, I think that the the whole range of courses, because you tried it out so early, you hadn't been able to see the big data and using our data sets on, on Azure. And so I, I think it's just gonna be amazing when um, in the next school year, when you guys roll it out. So that's- Oh, absolutely. I've already got them asking whether they can take the Azure exams and stuff. So. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Robert. Pleasure. Um, so when you uh, when you go through the program, you also get exposed to all kinds of experiences with Microsoft. Um, you can attend a DigiGirls event. You um, can go to our Microsoft Experience Center in London. You can do Imagine Cup uh, Junior webinars, and you can also attend a Work Experience Week. 
and Graham Peake, who is the Deputy CEO of Greenwood Academy's Trust, um, is working so hard across his entire trust to ensure that his that the young people in that trust are prepared for the future, and they participated in this year's Work Experience Week. Um, and so I would like to um, introduce Graham to you all to talk a bit about um, uh, what Greenwood is doing. Hi, Graham. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, really nice to be here. So, um, where do you start? I mean, what we're trying to do at Greenwood Academy is we work across the uh, central England and east of England. We've got 36 academies, about 18,000 students, 3,000 staff. So, what we're trying to do is to do this, but do it at scale and, and do it consistently. And I think the point's already been made about well, what's a digital career? Pretty much any career. You know, I'll give an example of my daughter who's a fine artist. Actually, now her skills and her profession is as much digital as it is, you know, traditional means. So there aren't many careers that aren't going to be significantly impacted by digital. So I think what we what we try to do at GAP is take a fairly expansive view of careers and employability. It's really important to us. So we've got a strategy that starts all the way back to uh, children that are age four, all the way to 19. And that works across a number of themes at each key stage, really to build up their uh, knowledge and, and, and growth in terms of ultimately taking control really of, of, of their employment. So th this slide here just tries to give a sense of how we plan to do that, how we do do it and, and the partners that we do it with. You know, Jen, as you said, you know, we work with a lot of your programmes and they're fantastic. They're really inspiring. And I think to add to, I mean, Robert's, you know, the feedback I've had, particularly on the coding, lessons have been outstanding really engaging high but maybe make the thing also that came out of it was it, it felt like a real segue for young people between school and work and it felt like it was really giving them a good insight into the sorts of jobs that were out there which they found incredibly useful and i think helped them helps it resonate with them and we've got a, a fairly rich tech environment at gap so we, we two or three years ago we we really ramped up our engagement in digital and, and our teaching staff are very well trained up, which is really important if we're trying to get young people to engage in good tech. You need teachers that understand how to use it and, and can enthuse them. Um, so over that period of time, we've been making, making big, big inroads and, and, and using uh, ostensibly through the 365 stack lots of uh, functionality. So what we did with the lessons, for example, we did a lot of work inside Teams and OneNote to actually take the lesson and do and, and, and deliver it and look at it in a very collaborative way to build some extra benefit in there as well. So that was a really good plus for us. Um, just going back to this slide, you wonder why it's up there. We're just trying to make the point, we're trying to pull all this together. And at the bottom there, we've got a number of organizations that are absolutely key in terms of our approach. So we've got the Gatsby benchmarks. We've been working on those for, for, for many years before they became a an Ofsted requirement, and also the new uh, career development framework from CDI. Career mark is a big thing for us. So what we have got an aspiration for is for every one of our 36 academies to achieve career mark. So far, we've got about 40%. We've got the only school in the country that's an infant school. That's an infant school that's got career mark. We're really proud of. And it just shows, you know, we talked about trying to give people, youngsters, you know, um, challenges, stereotypes. That starts as soon as they arrive with us. And then what we try and do, we work across a quite a large geographical area, is whether, whether the industry is uh, digital media, whether it's construction, whether it's finance, each of the areas we work in has got a very different market and very different opportunities. We work hand in glove with the local enterprise partnership network just to try and get a really firm grip on what's happening in that locality to help line better up our students for those opportunities. Um, Jen, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. The, the, the next slide, I, I won't spend very long talking about. I just wanted to flag this up because this is something we're really proud of that we created in the run-up to uh, National Careers Week this, this year um, with a careers and enterprise company and with Complete Careers. If you go to our website, which should be on there somewhere, uh, if it's not, we'll give you the information later. You can now down, download all these materials for free. And what this is, we've tried to put in one place for all of our students and our staff a whole suite of um, information, activities, 
um, based upon a number of things, including skills builder, so they can take responsibility over, in our organisation, many years to build up and evidence those skills. So this um, um, set of, uh, of materials, it's available for free. You can just go onto our website and, and download them. And if you look on the left-hand side, the point I was making there about local areas, we do a lot of work trying to be very clear about what the particular employment challenges and uh, issues are there. So in each area, we can, we can build upon those. And just find the final, final slide, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about digital. Um, so digital runs through, through all of this. Um, there are a huge, it's been referred to already, a multitude of skills that we know we need now, that some that we don't know we need, that we're going to need, lots of jobs that are changing by the day. So what we try and do in this space is really enthuse young people about the opportunity. I think if you fixate too much on what the particular roles are right now and what particular thing to do is right now, actually in five years' time it's going to be different. So we try and enthuse and we, we try and bring you know, many people in to help uh, that, that are relevant with young people that, that they can aspire to do. So, for example, there, Nadine, that's one of um, Jen's colleagues at Microsoft. She came in on careers week and did a, a large event with, with several hundred students talking about her journey into, into technology. And then just some of the other things that we do, we, we, try and, we try and reinforce digital skills by actually engaging in digital. So we do a lot of work through uh, means such as Flipgrid. So we do lots of tutorials in there. We signpost opportunities for young people. So you'll see there Microsoft Education Community and an idea award that we do. And then finally, you know, similar to some things Robert said, we have a strategy that also includes you know, some very specific outcomes and skills that we're trying to give in this digital space. And that gives a, a broad indication of what some of those things are. But I think you know, the, the, the virtual careers event that many of our students attended, again, it was inspirational. It, it, they saw things that were possible through the means of digital that they didn't understand before. You know, a lot of them thinking, I love gaming, and now potentially I can get through my love of gaming, I want to get into technology. So, you know, I, I, I'd implore anybody to get involved in it next year. It was, it was outstanding. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Graham. What you're doing at Greenwood is so inspirational, and I love that it goes from early years all the way to when they leave school. Um, your your early years academies are um, uh, showcase Microsoft showcase schools, um, and they have just made technology come alive um, in uh, in that EYFS space where so many people shy away from technology. And it's it's so important to start that computational thinking early and absolutely challenging those stereotypes. So I I just love what you what you're doing uh, at Greenwood. And in fact, both um, Greenwood and UTC Reading, um, UTC Reading is a showcase school and Greenwood has, I think, four showcase schools in, in their uh, trust. And they have uh, a dedication to teacher CPD. Because one of the things about preparing our students for the future is that you're not going to be able to do that unless your educators are prepared to um, and feel comfortable to deliver that in the classroom. So at Microsoft, we have the Microsoft Educator Center that really introduces teachers to all of these digital skills uh, concepts not just how to use Teams, not just um, how to use Flipgrid, but talking about Minecraft, talking about coding, talking about um, uh, different careers and possibilities of future. So it's really important to have your teachers on the Microsoft Educator Center and, and delving into those digital skills. Um, we have a course on eSports, we have courses on Power Automate. There's all kinds of um, great stuff to upskill your teachers with. And then once your teachers are using this, they should become Microsoft Innovative Educator experts. Um, our applications are open now until July 15th for teachers to apply. We would love to have you join our community. It is a great community of like-minded individuals who just share so much. There's so much inspiration and aspiration happening there that um, it's, it, um, uh, just 
it's just this great fuel and we would love to have more people in the conversation not to mention that we also bring lots of um, guest speakers in and and we offer opportunities out to our MIEEs so it's um, a, a great support network please do join the applications um, if you go to msedu.eventcore.com you can apply to become an MIEE and then if you are at a school who would like to become a showcase school, that you can also apply in the same space. You can become a showcase incubator school. And these are schools that as a school, you are dedicated to digital skills like UTC Reading, like the schools in Greenwood Academies. You are dedicated to making sure that your students are prepared for the future. And we would love you to have you as a Microsoft um, incubator school as well. And those applications are open until August 1st. So, um, Suzanne, that is it from us. Uh, we can take some questions now. Thank you very much and thank you to uh, Robert and Graham for sharing your experiences as well today. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a few questions in the question window, so Tim if you could share those with us and uh, we'll see what, what we've got. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we've got time for two or three questions. Um, so the first question, uh, it's going back to earlier on in your presentation, Jen, uh, around the pathways and the lesson lesson plans. Um, are these uh, free or uh, do you have to pay for elements? Um, that's the question. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's all free. It's so, yeah, the Explore the Digital Future, it's um, uh, downloadable from a website, so it's all free. Um, it's free to become a Microsoft Innovative Educator. It's free to become a Microsoft Incubator School. Um, we are here to invest in, in teachers and in school leaders. Great. Um, we have a question from a primary school teacher. Um, just went, um, came into the, came into the uh, session a little bit um, after you started and just uh, curious to know um, is there any of this possible for primary school children do, um, uh, just I think a recap really uh, for for that teacher yeah absolutely so the the content that's that is in explore the digital future um, probably starts around uh, end of year five year six is probably when you can start delivering that um, that content but there are um, always things you can do before then. And I think Graham is probably best place to talk about um, what you can do in Key Stage uh, um, uh, 1 and 2. Yeah, and, sure. uh, oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, just to add, in terms of the certain lessons, we did those in, in Year 6, and the feedback on those were they were appropriate for Year 6. They're quite tough, actually, quite challenging. But they, they worked well, and the feedback was good. And I think you know we saw that as part of very much quite a you know, a broad a, a broad approach on careers, including digital at, at, at primary. But really starting off by busting some myths about um, stereotypes. I'll give you one example, and it's sort of indirectly related to, to this. You try and find a female electrician. Now we found one eventually to so just try and prove the point. But there are some there are some professional ways simply very difficult to do. So spend a lot of time on that, and also you know I look at my my, my background. Young people often, you know, you can only see kind of what's immediately in front of you. You want people to sort of expose you to other other things, other areas of work that you maybe never thought of, and, and, and make it relatable because you can relate to them. So we do a lot of that in, in primary. And as Jen said, that's also underpinned by a very rich uh, digital offer, highly trained teachers. So actually, from an early age, if you go into one of our nurseries, um, they're using the same tech as I'm using. It's just that they might access it through a QR code when they first go in rather than a password. So, you know, it's sort of ingrained really in everything that we do. Thank you. And one final question uh, from a teacher. Where do I start? <laughs> Well, I suppose it depends on if you're a secondary or primary teacher, but um, I would say go to aka.ms slash explore the digital future and, and have a look at those resources. And then also go to education.microsoft.com and start learning all about the, um, the, the ways that um, you yourself as an educator can be upskilled. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, just, uh, just to sort of pass back to Suzanne, have one, have one really positive comment um, saying how uh, 
how useful this is today. Thank you. It's a fantastic initiative. So, uh, and, and I echo that. So, thank you very much. Yes, thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Tim. And uh, yeah, I echo that too, actually. Just so many resources there for teachers at all levels to, to access. Um, and it's really good to see some real experiences that uh, you guys have had as well. So thank you. Um, and really, that brings us to the end of the, this session. So I'll, I'll bring it to a close. Um, at the end of this webinar, a short survey will appear on screen and we'll be grateful if you could take a minute to complete that survey. Recording of the webinar will be available on the CAS YouTube channel after this session and via the CAS website. And we hope to see you at other sessions in the Summer Showcase. Since we've got one more day left and then we are finished for, for this uh, Summer Showcase. So a final thank you again to Jen and Robert and Graham uh, for your contributions today. It's been fantastic. And hopefully see you at the Send uh, Through a Blended Learning Approach session tomorrow lunchtime. Keep sharing the word about computing at school. Thanks for joining and have a lovely evening. Bye for now.